A tight knit community in Indiana is in shock tonight. After watching schools nationwide deal with an epidemic of school shootings, we have one that is now hit here near home. Good evening. It's now 4 o'clock. I'm Amory Tiernan along with Don Stair, and we continue our coverage today of that shooting that occurred at the West Middle School in Noblesville today. And here's it what we is, know. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it has just been a very traumatic day. It has. And here's what we know so far. A student and a teacher have been injured, and there is another student in custody tonight. Right now, police are at that young man's home. And Scott Swan is at the middle school, and he has the latest for us from there. Scott? Yes, John. First and foremost, we want to give you an update on this teacher who was shot today here at uh, Noblesville West Middle School. We get this update off the Facebook page of his mom, Christy Seaman. She posts on her Facebook page, Jason Seaman is out of surgery and is doing well. Three shots, one through the abdomen, one through the hip, and one in the forearm. Please pray for the student that was also shot today. So again, that's the uh, latest that we're getting from the uh, teacher's mom, uh, Jason Seaman, who appears to have been a hero today uh, during this shooting. And we'll get to more on uh, Jason's uh, 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 condition from the hospital coming up in a live report. But I want to bring in uh, political reporter Kevin Rader, who is on the scene today. And Kevin, you've been covering and talking with investigators, and you found out that Jason Seaman wasn't the only hero in this particular case, was he? Yeah, it's exactly right, Scott. It's hard to believe we're standing by a school with police tape surrounding it. But he was not the only hero today, and that was a point that was really driven home by the superintendent of state police. Okay, so we're, as we're waiting for that uh, sound, Kevin, uh, you were here at this news conference today and can kind of bring our viewers up to speed in terms of what the state police superintendent said. I do want to, but first I want to show you, Scott, something that's just off to our right. Kids were running for their lives from here. Is it a surprise that we might see a shoe? over here and say, forget this, I'm getting out of here. And that is what we're looking at here outside this middle school. Doug Carter really hit hard on one thing, the point that Scott was making, is he said, we've all been talking about, uh, obviously, uh, the teacher who was very heroic in all of this. And in fact, at six foot six and a former small college football player, he may have made the greatest tackle of his career here today and saved lives. But on the other hand, I've been told by several people, by numerous people here today, that there were other heroes here today. Mm -hmm. The student resource officer who was quick to respond. And I'm also told, Scott, students responded and had a big role in this today. So I'm told, just hold it up a little bit because don't focus on just one hero. There are many here, and hopefully we'll get to tell all their stories soon. Yeah, certainly over the hours and days to come, I think we're going to learn a lot more about the heroism that was in that classroom today, a little bit before 9 o'clock, when gunshots erupted. And what uh, police are telling us right now is that a student excused himself from class this morning morning, went out, came back in with two handguns and opened fire. A teacher that we've talked about, Jason Seaman, and a student, a 13-year-old, were both wounded in that gunfire. And we can only imagine that uh, that, that teacher and others, perhaps, were able to prevent uh, further injuries inside of that one classroom today. Our live team coverage continues in downtown Indianapolis. My colleague, Carlos Diaz, joins us live from outside IU Methodist Hospital. Carlos? Good morning. Good afternoon, Scott. This did start in the morning up in Noblesville, but as you said, Jason Seaman, the, the teacher that everyone's calling a hero today, came to this hospital behind me, IU Health Methodist, the emergency room. He was brought here at around 10.15 this morning by a paramedics ambulance all the way from Noblesville because this is a Trauma One Medical Center. and. As has been reported by his mom on Facebook, there were uh, allegedly three gunshot wounds that he, he suffered, uh, and he actually got the care that he needed right here at Methodist Hospital at IU Health. Now, this was a very chaotic day for IU uh, Methodist Hospital because of the fact that there was a officer who was involved in a hit and run at 7.30 this morning, an officer on a motorcycle, and that happened at 7.30 this morning. So you had a lot of police officers coming by on motorcycles to give support to that officer. That happened at 7.30. Then at 10.15, you had uh, Jason Seaman coming down from uh, Noblesville uh, Middle School. 
and he was brought here as well. And then about two hours later, his family was brought here uh, with uh, an Indiana State Trooper and brought in to see Jason Seaman at that time. He has been here every, ever since. We have not gotten any updates on his condition since then. And if we do, we'll pass it along as soon as possible. Scott? to bring in my colleague Emily Longnecker who joins me here at Noblesville West Middle School and Emily this was a chaotic day for staff members teachers and of course parents of students wasn't it it certainly was Scott yeah traumatic for the folks that were inside Noblesville West Middle School but can you imagine how traumatic it was for those parents to get calls and texts from their children and that is how they learned, many of them, that there was an active shooter situation inside this school. And many of these same parents now asking what it will take to stop this kind of violence like this dad that we spoke with. He has a son here in sixth grade. There's so many guns everywhere, I don't know the way we'll be able to stop it. It would be great if there was a way to get guns off the street. It would be great if there was a way for our kids to go to school and just learn and have fun and make memories with their friends. But the gun culture won't let us do that. So we're going to, as parents, every day send our kids off to a killing field. So until that changes, and we both know it won't, there's nothing we can do. And now many of these same parents asking what happens when this holiday weekend is over, what happens comes, come Tuesday when they need to send their children back to this school. Many saying they really don't want to. Many kids saying they don't want to come back. Kids, parents, understandably, just terrified. Scott? Yeah, it's been a terrifying day for many of those parents here in Noblesville. Emily Longnecker, thanks for your coverage. We'll be getting back to you. Senator Todd Young was in Evansville today in southern Indiana. When you got news of the shooting, what did you think? And you've been here talking with authorities. What have you since learned? Well, goodness, um, you never want this to, um, to happen um, here in the state of Indiana or in your backyard. Um, I actually grew up here in this county. I went to public schools here. Uh, I have family who attends public schools here. So uh, this hit, hit really close to home and um, my initial thoughts were, gosh, number one, I, I hope no one's seriously injured. That unfortunately is not the case. And um, secondarily, we want to uh, pray that everyone uh, is uh, uh, recovers if, if at all possible. Their status is uncertain right now. So uh, my focus and uh, my prayers right now are, are with all those involved. I also am thinking, of course, about law enforcement that just by all accounts did an exceptional job along with that heroic teacher uh, to help contain uh, this very horrible situation. Now, yeah, based on what you've heard from uh, law enforcement and the staff that you've been talking to, what can you shed some light on in terms of what happened inside that classroom today? You know, I've been asking a lot of questions. What what would motivate, what would influence uh, someone to um, to basically, you know, to, to lash out at another individual in a way that, that could uh, take their life away? Uh, I'm not sure why a young person would engage in, in that sort of horrific act, but that's the sort of question we need to be answering uh, moving forward. I aim to do my part uh, moving forward. Our churches need to do their part, our families working with local communities and government at every level. And, and so uh, I'm really proud of how the community has responded and um, look forward to uh, working with everyone else to be part of the solution moving forward. My last question, uh, this is a staggering statistic that so far in 2018, 21 school shootings have taken place across the country, with Noblesville West Middle School being the most recent. What more can be done by lawmakers to try to reduce the number of school shootings? Well, there will be plenty more time for a discussion of, of, of solutions. Today I'm focused on the families and the victims and, and the members of this community. But we need to be able to answer those questions I posed. Uh, why does an in individual uh, target another individual? Why do our young people do this? There ought to be complete reassurance for every parent uh, that when they drop their kids off to school, as I dropped my four young kids off to school in Bloomington this morning, that those kids will be safe and secure for the duration of the day. All right, Senator Todd Young, thanks for joining us live here on Channel 13. Nice Thank to you, see man. you on this day. Uh, we want to go ahead and continue our live team coverage now by going over to Noblesville High School. And we're gonna, we'll get back to uh, Steve Jefferson in just a moment at Noblesville High School. But for the moment, let's get now back to John Stair and Anne-Marie Tiernan back in Indianapolis.
All right. Thank you very much, Scott. And uh, thanks for that update on what has been a very long uh, and emotional day for the Noblesville community and central Indiana. Yeah, certainly uh, didn't uh, seem like it was going to start out that way today. Today mm -hmm. is carb day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We have beautiful weather. The weather seems to be uh, holding for the weekend, all the festivities we have going on around Indianapolis. But I think that's uh, part of the nature of events like this. You just can't predict when and where they're going to happen. And this is, in fact, the 21st school shooting so far in 2018. And uh, unfortunately, that 21st incident uh, hit us at home right here in Noblesville. Yeah, well, certainly we've, it's a, almost a shooting a week, as CNN has been reporting earlier today. So also happening tonight, there's quite a bit that's happening west of Indianapolis. It is Carb Day, as I said. Thousands of race fans are at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for a day of racing and concerts. And uh, coming up, we're going to get a look at how police are keeping fans safe there. And it was a warm carb day. Temperatures right now in the middle and upper 80s across central Indiana. Heat will be the weather issue this weekend. I'll have your forecast. He just had this weird look on his face, and then he reached into his right pocket and pulled out a, held, a, a handheld gun. We're hearing from students in that classroom today when police say a young student there opened fire. Their firsthand accounts are next. Our continuing coverage of the shooting at Noblesville West Middle School continues on this special edition of Eyewitness News at 4 o'clock. And welcome back to Noblesville West Middle School. I'm Scott Swan. We continue our live team coverage today of the shooting that took place. Well, again, one suspect is in custody. A teacher and a 13-year-old girl are in the hospital right now. We'll get updates on their conditions coming up shortly here on Eyewitness News. But at 2 o'clock this afternoon, investigators and authorities who've been canvassing this middle school looking for evidence wanted to talk today about how quickly law enforcement was able to get here on the scene and contain the information. One of those who spoke very proudly of the law enforcement impact was State Police Superintendent Doug Carter. I'm going to tell them about the extraordinary response from not just the community, from public safety entities, from our media partners from all over, getting calls now from all over the country. And um, here we go again. Here, here we go again. And it's just really, really, really unfortunate. Yeah, very unfortunate today. The good news reportedly is that Jason Seaman, the seventh grade teacher, is out of surgery after being hit by three bullets, one in the abdomen, one in the hip, and one in the forearm. That's the word we're getting from his mom's Facebook page tonight. The students here at Noblesville West Middle School were immediately evacuated to nearby Noblesville High School today to be reunited with their parents. And that's where our team coverage continues tonight at 4 o'clock with Eyewitness News reporter Steve Jefferson. Steve? Yeah, Scott, this was the rendezvous place, Noblesville High School, where parents had to come and pick up their children. Imagine more than a thousand parents showing up frantically. This area you see here was a makeshift parking lot here on the grass for parents concerned about their children trying to get to the high school. Some of them did get in, but then they had to put the high school here on lockdown temporarily. And we talked to parents while they were going in and coming out. Take a listen. That no, it's not fair. No child should be scared to go to school. Teachers shouldn't be scared to go to school. Parents shouldn't be scared to send their kids to school. I mean, I'm, I'm a middle school teacher who stays home with my kids now, and I've heard that it was a seventh grade teacher who tackled the shooter, and people just don't realize what teachers do for kids. <laughs> What would you say to the other parents that are still waiting? Um, do, do you have a sense of relief right now? Uh, selfishly, I have relief that my nephew is physically okay, but there are going to be so many scars from this that I can't even imagine. So uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say besides thank God that they're physically okay, but now the rest of the work starts of making them okay. Schools are supposed to be one of the safest places in our community, and as you mentioned, teachers are now having to deal with so much. Yeah. Um, what do you say to our other teachers that, um, that go to work every day? That you're heroes, and I, I know 
what you do because I am one of you and I like to think I would do exactly what the teachers did today. Um, but most teachers have their own children too that they want to go home to. So just think about that if you, you know, ever want to complain about your child's teacher, think about what they're doing every day with your kids while they probably have kids also that they want to get home to. Despite the long wait for some of the parents, some of them waiting two hours, some of them two and a half, some even three hours, they uh, gave compliments to law enforcement how they handled the reuniting them with their students here at the high school. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll hear from a seventh grader who actually heard the gunshots and heard his coach tackling the shooter. That's coming up in the next half hour. Back to you, Scott. Hey, I can't even imagine how uh, frightening that must have been for those children who were inside of this school today when gunfire erupted. Steve Jefferson, thanks so much. You know, the, the parent that Steve interviewed there who was talking about uh, their student being physically okay, but now having to deal with the emotional scars of what they have seen today. Imagine being a parent and having to now explain to your son or daughter what has happened at school. And even if your son or daughter didn't attend Noblesville West Middle School, they're going to be asking you questions about what happened today, Mom, what happened today, Dad, at that school. We had on our uh, newscast today a behavioral therapist from Community Health Hospital to help parents get some advice on how to talk to their students about the violence that they've experienced today. And I guess the question is, you're a behavioral health specialist. We have kids that, that are going to take the weekend off, they're going to take the holiday off, they're going to come back next Tuesday. Is it going to be good for them to get back, to go back to the, the scene of, of what happened today and, and sort of pros begin processing it at that point? I think any time we have the opportunity to go back to structure, to go back to the familiar, can be really helpful. Um, it, it will be important, and I'm sure the, the school will have counselors in place okay. um, to help the students to process. Well, and Ann, Ann mentioned that many school districts have the last day of school today. Yes. If that were the case in Noblesville, and they would have to wait the entire summer before going back, what kind of difficult situation might that create? Well, I think a lot of schools are very mindful of that and probably would have the opportunity for students to still come back, um, even if it's not a school day, to have the opportunity to talk to counselors. Um, I think just any time we give students the opportunity to be heard, um, to process their feelings, one of the students said it so eloquently earlier, to process their feelings and to move forward in a healthy way yeah. um, is, is really beneficial. All right, Jenny, thank you. Jenny Volker, Behavioral Health Specialist with Community Health Network. I think one of the other things that we heard that counselor talk today about was encouraging parents to be good listeners tonight and through the weekend as those children want to go ahead and talk about what they have heard on TV, what they may have experienced if they were in this school, or what they may have heard from other schools, allowing the children to go ahead and start the conversation and uh, reassuring them about school safety in their own particular schools. That'll be a story we'll continue to cover here on our special edition of Eyewitness News. And John, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Scott. And I think that's a very important lesson that uh, every child is going to process this differently and that uh, parents, you are the experts of your children and so really have that antenna for what they might be feeling.